At Agape, the mother of Nabonidus was a priestess for the moon god Sin at this god's sanctuary in Haran. After traveling to Babylon, she used her influence to obtain a position for her son Nabonidus in the royal court. In 556 BC, only months into the reign of Labashi Marduk, Nabonidus overthrew this boy king and became ruler of Babylon. Nabonidus' mother, Adagapi, remained an important figure in the early years of Nabonidus' reign, often acting as regent during her son's absences. In the ninth year of Nabonidus, Adagapi passed away at the age of 101 or 102, and she was buried in Haran with the honors of a queen. Nabonidus commissioned a steel or monument in her honor at Haran, which acted as a sort of obituary. Although the first Adagapi steel discovered was found damaged, another copy was found at Haran that is an exact duplicate. From this, we can confirm the names of all the Neo-Babylonian kings, as well as the links of their reigns, up to, of course, the then reigning king Nabonidus. Nabonidus was a king who had an admiration for the things of the old Assyrian world power and had a special interest in Haran, the last Assyrian stronghold which was overthrown in 609 BC. This is likely due to the temple that was found at Haran that was dedicated to the moon god Sin. Although the chief god of Babylon was Marduk, Nabonidus was especially devoted to the moon god Sin, whom he worshipped above all other gods, even to the neglect of Marduk, and this made the priesthood of Marduk none too happy. Nabonidus took many long absences from Babylon, and he spent time in Tema, which was an important oasis in Arabia, and here he could control lucrative Arabian trade routes. During his absences, his son Belsajar acted as co-regent in Babylon. One of these absences was for as much as 10 years, lasting from 553 to 543 B.C., as for the real reasons why he spent so much time away, whether due to him not feeling at home in Babylon, or because of religious tensions due to his devotion to sin over Marduk, one can only speculate. However, toward the east, there was a growing threat to the Babylonian Empire, which drew Nabonidus back to Babylon. But after so many years of long absence, it may have been a matter of too little, too late. The growing threat to the east was Cyrus II, king of Persia. This Persian king had already conquered the Medes and incorporated them into his empire. Thereafter, he had a string of victories and conquests that stretched all the way into Asia Minor. By 540 BC, he started to encroach into Babylonian territory. In September 539 BC, Cyrus won a decisive battle against the Babylonians at the Battle of Opus a city just north of Babylon. This helped him secure not only an important river crossing, but allowed Cyrus's forces to break through the Median Wall that defended from attacks from the north. This battle ended all serious resistance to the Persian invasion, and Cyrus's forces were soon headed for Babylon itself. On October 6, after losing the city of Sippar, Nabonidus fled. On the 12th of October, Cyrus's forces entered Babylon without a fight. On October 29th, 539 BC, Cyrus entered Babylon and was declared king. Seventy years after Babylon defeated the Assyrian superpower, the Babylonian Empire itself met defeat and was no more. As to whether Nabonidus was executed or imprisoned or exiled, history is conflicted and unclear. But one thing is certain. The line of the Neo-Babylonian kings had come to its end. Truly, in regard to Babylon, Mini Mini Tekel Parson, Mini, God has numbered the days of your reign and has brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Peris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians.